and welcome to Swangen. I'm your host, Erica Lute. On today's show, we are here at the Inuvik International Airport awaiting the much-anticipated arrival of celebrity chef David Wolfman. Tomorrow, we will accompany David Wolfman on a visit with the elders at the long-term care. And Saturday, we will culminate in a fierce cooking competition with the local chefs. As you can see, Canadian North Flight ST4002 is just about to touch down and we're looking forward to a weekend of cooking frenzy. It's Apprenticeship Week every February, March for the government and we celebrate it in many different ways. And in the past we've uh, focused on primarily the tra traditional trades of plumbing and carpentry. Um, and this year we want, felt that we'd do something different so I thought well, we'll just focus on cooking. I know there's lots of local, local talent in that area and I um, happened to catch him on TV one night and uh, I emailed him and um, he responded and he was ex excited. He wanted to come and be a part of us. It's, it's to raise awareness of the cooking trade. Um, there's a lot of people out there that, like I said, have the natural talent um, and just uh, don't know where to go with it. And um, bringing somebody like David Wolfman to show uh, where you can take cooking. Very long. Yeah. yeah. I've been flying for almost, it seems like 40 hours. I think the most important thing is, um, is taking the knowledge that's been shared with me and passing it on. It's part of our custom. Meeting, meeting the young people, inspiring them. It, there's nothing more that I like than, than a young, uh, energetic mind that's just opened up and it's, it's almost like a blank screen. It's got a blank screen with all kinds of ideas. What they are is really opened. And, uh, and that's, to me, that's just, it builds my enthusiasm just to see that. Here we are at the local northern store where the Wolfman takes a chance to purchase some last minute produce the night before the big presentation. Ah, lots of nice produce. I want to get a few peppers. These traveled a long way, these have got air miles. Yeah, I brought most of the goods up from Toronto, but there's just little odds and sods and pieces. Uh, I came up with 350 pounds, a lot of meat, a lot of uh, pots and pans and plates and serving utensils, knives. you got to have your tools in the, in the tray. But so there's just some little fresh things that I need to pick up. What do you need the bowl for? I'm going to make some bannock up tomorrow. And there's my secret. I can't show you my secret. No, baking powder. So I have some fresh sage. I have some shortening, some baking powder, a bit of flour. So we got everything now. Studying before? No. First time. First time? No sledding in Toronto. No sledding in Toronto, no. I was giving the wolfman a dog ride, probably about four miles. About there. Well, how many dogs do you have? We have about 21. Yeah, you train them every day, about five times a week. If you can do that, let them rest two days. Yeah. When the carnivals come? I'll probably be running the the races around these small communities. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and um, like this weekend, you know, with like the Wolfman in town, like, are you gonna go to any of the events? Or? Uh, yes, probably. Most likely, my mom will push me around and probably bring me there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> It is Friday morning and here we are at the Inuvik Regional Hospital where the Wolfman is about to cook up a storm with elders and dedicated fans at the long-term care. It has not been confirmed, but we heard rumors that Arctic char will be prepared today. We should hurry up now because the elders are taking the best seats. <laughs> oh, they're all there. 
Good morning. I'd like to welcome David Wolfman to our to our facility, and uh, he's going to be here to demonstrate some great cooking for us today. So I'm just going to get out of the road and let David do his thing. Welcome, David. Thank you. Uh, I'm originally from Lillooet, BC, uh, which is uh, not too far from here, just uh, down the street that way. And I'm doing what I call this wow. Aboriginal fusion. I take traditional foods. I add a little bit of a modern twist to them. And I fuse them up and then I make something really funky that, um, that we uh, take a look at. It looks attractive and it's still respecting the traditions and the customs. So what I'm going to do is I have an arctic char here. So this is another way you can do the fish. It's just like this. And I leave the skin on this one and I roll this up just like this. And then, and then I can serve it like that. And so it looks a little bit fancy, right? All right. And I'm just going to dice up a little bit of onion. A lot of the native people, like my family, we like to cook. Most of us in our family do cooking. When I'm in the clavic and visiting my mother, we, we, um, she's sitting on her couch and watching APTN and he comes on. And we're really interested in everything that he's doing because he does a presentation really well. I'm going to take the skin off because I just take my knife. Being native, also First Nations, well, that's, that's another plus for us because that's a good role model. And it makes me think that, um, that our people are getting into positions, you know, in good positions and, and doing, you know, educating themselves. Now this is a lovely job, eh? You get apprentices or journeymen and you have them do this, right? You go, hey, give them a knife and you tell them to clean up some mushrooms, right? Like this, right? And that, again, the best way to do this is to go and get um, 10 or 15 boxes of them, right? And just keep doing them, right? And then eventually you get good, right? <laughs> My pan is nice and hot now. Take a little bit of olive oil. <coughs> and just for flavor, I'm gonna add a little bit of balsamic vinegar. So what I wanna look for is, see, see how it coats the spoon? If it coats the spoon and it stays on there, then it's thick enough. If it doesn't, I just let it continue to reduce down. Again, like I said, what's really important here is that we have plate presentation, right? And I'm just going to lift up my salmon. What's really important about working in a kitchen is, uh, is loving what you do. You know, I love doing this. Uh, you can see it in my work. And the energy is carried into the plate. Everything is edible and usable. You know, you didn't waste nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's the way that we do it here too. We don't waste things. Or, you know, I, I take the peelings and everything and I use that for stock also. So it's, it's very, it's really, really interesting. While we're talking there, maybe I can cut out the other charge. Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go, sweetie, try some.
Hannah Whitbit, and welcome back to Swangin. Excitement is arising as we witness the last preparations for the cooking contest here at Samuel Hearn Secondary School. Under the Wolfman's critical gaze, four teams of local chefs will compete against each other to create the tastiest bannock and muskox chili the town has ever seen. Your food is all going to go on a table. It's going to go in there. Nobody's going to know whose food is who. Period. Any objections there? Uh, the purpose of this competition to me is to raise the awareness of the culinary field. You know, it's going to be outside people coming in, seeing these guys cooking and that. And to promote working with different people. Uh, we broke up the teams and before we split them up again and moved them all around, shifted them all around. That's what the culinary, the hospitality industry is all about. Just to raise the awareness of uh, that we don't just fill our mouths up with food, that there's uh, an art to it, there's a technique, there's a passion, there's people that are really wanting to do this uh, for a career, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing career. It's a guaranteed if you get in this career, you'll never be hungry. I know that for a fact. Most important thing, please have fun, huh? Clean as you go, teamwork, organization, organization cleanliness, and meet down class is important. Okay, have fun, let's go, and uh, enjoy yourself. What are the major ingredients today? Uh, muskox and uh, flour and, uh, and, a, and just a bunch of what we call par stock, onions, tomato, that type of thing. So it's up to them to really take it and to utilize it how they want to. Oh, I've done lots of, I've been in uh, some really major competitions myself. I was in the World Culinary Olympics in Frankfurt, Germany in 92, and we won seven golds. And that was the first time going there, let alone the first native team to go there. And so I've, I've got the experience in the competition area because I grade marks every single day. Um, this is something I do every day. And so it just becomes second nature. And, and I couldn't emphasize more, like you saw earlier, that the fact that, um, have fun. Do it and have fun because that's that's the key, right? This muskox smells wonderful and delicious already. How fortunate we are to be working with this delightful product. Muskox is uh, all from the uh, Banks Island uh, New Yellow Muskox project. It's uh, been ground and uh, boned out and ground uh, in Sachs Harbor by the people of uh, the HTC who uh, work with us uh, every uh, every year at the Muskox project. Okay guys, we're just after 1.30. 88 minutes left. We've just added the vegetables.
tires, eh? have to give the judges any because this is really good. <laughs> see what you're doing. Competition. What are you looking for? Jalapenos. the other teams. Ten after, so we have 50 minutes left. And at three o'clock sharp, I want all you guys to go out, and then the judges will come in and grade your food right on your own tables here. I think that's a, a fair way. You don't have to travel with the food. It's all sitting right here, okay? okay. Everybody understand that? Okay, so you got 50 minutes left. I'll let you know at 2.30, you got half an hour left. And our judges, uh, like I said, three o'clock sharp. Have your station set up the way you want. What else is left to do? Oh, we're just about done. We just have to wait for it to cook now. It's to uh, open them up and uh, get a flower effect. So our customers are waiting, so everybody go on out, have a coffee, mix and mingle, talk to your colleagues, talk to your other colleagues, and uh, thanks a lot, guys. Hope you had a good time.
So you guys can talk amongst you. Please don't don't try and influence the judges by throwing us money or <laughs> or muskrat. We're gonna walk around together and taste, and then I'm gonna let you guys go around and make your own comments and put your own marks down. Everybody has a pen. Thank you very much. Presentation and taste, which is 50%. They get 10% for presentation, 10% for consistency, um, texture. Is there cooked products in there and, and not cooked products? So onions are crunchy, you know what I mean? Is there a consistency in there? Um, what is the um, texture like? Obviously the taste and then the uniqueness of what they decided to put on the plate. So that's how we mark it, 10% each. Uh, I, I, I've been telling people, if they're really, really good, let's go on eight, nine. You know, they're outstanding at 10, um, but we don't, everybody want to have 50%, right? Smooth, light, California. Smooth, light, California style. Eh? So team number three, we can have you guys come up. Lots of flavor and funky. Go. Lasting, smooth flavor. Very pleasant. Team number one. Team number one. Well, let's bring up the winning team. It's team five. Team number two. It was difficult to say what was the most, the best, you know, because some aspects of one dish would be a little bit different than the other one, so you try to balance it and be fair. It's always difficult uh, cooking with wild meat. People really came up to the table and did some very, very good presentations. Uh, I've really, really enjoyed myself up here. Um, love to come back if you guys will have me.